is a $170 knife sharper than a $12 knife. We're gonna go and take a test, check it out and see, do you get the sharper knife when you pay more money or can you get the same sharpness for 12 bucks? Now these are two knives. One of them is a Benchmade. They run around $175 on average. This one I cannot pronounce. It's a no-name knife that I got on Timu. I liked it because it had a G10 glass fiber handle. It actually looked pretty cool. I liked the dimensions on it. I liked the fact that you could actually open the blade very quickly with the bearing joint. And it seemed to be a pretty good knife with D2 steel. And it cost me 12 bucks. Now I'll tell you by the weight, this thing is not light. It's solid. It's not overly heavy. Feels great in your hand, but I'm curious how sharp this blade is compared to the Benchmade Bug Out. Can an inexpensive knife that you get come razor sharp? We're gonna go ahead and check that out next on this video. Now to test the sharpness of my knives, I'm using what's called a best tester. This measures the gram force you put upon a blade the apex on a calibrated medium. You press down and it measures your gram pressure. This one is accurate to one gram and it takes 25 measurements a second. This is really the definitive way to determine if your knife is sharp, is getting sharper, or if you're actually dulling your knife because you can do multiple tests to ensure that your knife is where you want it to be. Now, the great thing about this is that it takes out the guesswork. If you learn how to do this properly, and I've talked about this on numerous videos because most people I see doing this are doing this wrong. They do not know how to use a best tester and they are doing everything except the correct way to do it. And today I'm gonna to show you the correct way to do it and we're gonna do our test and see is a $150 or $175 knife as sharp as a $12 knife. Now to check the sharpness, you wanna use a fulcrum. This is a magnetic fulcrum that has a place to set your blade in it to actually test as you're pushing down on the medium to make sure that you have an even amount of pressure and you keep the blade level going across the medium. So what you do is you take your knife and you're gonna put it on the fulcrum towards the back end and you can adjust this back and forth like so to test the various parts of the knife. We'll go ahead and do our first test in the center of the blade and see where we end up at. Now to do the best test correctly, you don't take the blade and slam it down. You don't push it down. You take the blade and you set it on the medium and you slowly press where these digits actually start moving up and you can see them moving until the media breaks. That is the correct way to do that. If you watch most people, they do not do that at all. You can actually cheat this test by slamming down quickly or slamming and moving it and cutting it, which really does no purpose unless you wanna actually lie to somebody to tell them something sharper than it is. So doing the test correctly is really critical to make sure you see that I'm presenting accurate information that isn't manipulated at all. So we'll put this down. We're gonna go into our test. Set this on the medium like so, and we're gonna go ahead and place it on here, and I can see the zero will change, and it will start changing to a number, and it stopped at 154. Okay, we have our media reloaded. Go ahead and do another test. Typically, you wanna do this three times. If you really wanna check the true sharpness, you measure three times, take an average, and that's your number. So we're gonna go ahead and test it again, and we're gonna test in the center of the blade and see what our score is. And we'll do it again now, just slowly set it down in there, and we're at 180. So we did two instead of three tests for saving time. Now we're gonna take the bench made and we're gonna go ahead and see what the bug out measures on the best score. Let's go ahead and test this and see where we're at. This is at 279. 279, 330 is factory sharpness, 300, 330. So 279 is actually acceptable, but it's a lot duller than this $12 knife, pretty amazing. And here you go, 279. We'll go ahead and do it again one more time and see how we get on the best score. We're at 279 grams of pressure last time. So we're gonna go ahead now and put this in here and we're gonna go ahead and slide it in and see where we're at. Again, you can put your hand on here if you want, but you wanna make sure it's going very slowly. Press on the medium and you'll see the numbers start spinning and then you get down. And again, we're at 257, 257. Very consistent scores. This knife is much less sharp than this knife. Now I'm gonna use the Torma T1, which is the number one sharpener I use for all my kitchen knives. This is kind of similar to a 
a kitchen knife, or you can use it as a kitchen knife. It's actually a bug out. It's a field knife, but it is a standard blade. It is something that you would actually use a T1 to sharpen, but although it's designed for kitchen knives, I do use it for some other things that Tormek will suggest is only for kitchen knives, but I will argue that if I use this in my kitchen and I cut food with it, it's a kitchen knife. So we're gonna go ahead and sharpen it up and see, I want this thing in the hundreds. Let's go ahead and give it a shot on the 600 diamond wheel. And we're gonna go ahead and get this thing fixed up. We're gonna give it a sharpening and then we'll go ahead and give it a honing. And then we'll give it a test and see where we're at. Now that I've sharpened it and used the diamond wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and get off all the dust from the metal shavings. And I can already tell that edge is shinier than when I first got it. It's really uh, getting polished. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. We're going to do the honing wheel now next and hone this. Take off any of the burr that's remaining, the micro abrasions on this thing. And now we're going to finish it with off of the leather strop. Now that we have our leather stropping finished, this apex along this edge here, this blade, I can, I can absolutely feel the difference. When I first felt this knife, I could tell it didn't feel razor sharp, but this I can tell is razor sharp and the best tester is gonna prove. I think this thing is definitely under 200. We'll see where it ends up. I can see right here as I center up, I'm on the 20 degree indicator lines. Nice, bright, sharp, even curves. Tells me that I am 20 degrees and it's actually even brighter and clearer and a crisper line, which tells me that this thing is definitely sharp. If you have a knife that's super dull and you put it in a goniometer, you won't even see any lines. It'll just be mush, which tells you you gotta kinda either do the marker test, which is what I would typically do to find out where it's at, but hopefully it has enough of an edge you can use the goniometer to tell you where it's at. In this case, I was able to tell right away because it was in the 200 range, so that'll actually work. If you're in the 400 on up range, you're not gonna get a great reading on the goniometer, which is actually a good indication that it's really, really dull. So let's go ahead and check it out and see how sharp did I get this with using the T1 and my leather strop with no compound, just leather after the honing process. Zero it out. Would you believe if I told you I got this to an 84? An 84. Now I'll tell you right now, without the T1, I would have not gotten into an 84. So 84, we'll go ahead and do one more test on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this media back up like so. We'll take this now, we're gonna put this here. Go ahead and zero it out. We had an 84, we're gonna check it again and see where we go. Here we go. Eighty-nine. I mean, come on. Can you not get even exact? I mean, 84 grams versus 89 grams, which shows you this Tormek T1 is absolutely amazing for all your kitchen knives, all your kitchen knives, even though it might be your field knife. These used in the kitchen, so it's a kitchen knife. And you make sure to let me know what you think. Uh, this knife I'm not going to test because it was really sharp already and for 12 bucks. Um, it does show you that you can get a knife that's razor sharp for really inexpensive, and you can get one that's really expensive that isn't as sharp, but with the Torma T1, you can bring that down to below razor sharpness. Look at the best scale right here. This shows you the before and after scoring, and you'll see that the Torma T1 made an incredible difference. Tell me what you think. Do you have to spend a ton of money for a good knife, and do you think that you would like to use the Torma T1 in your kitchen to get your knife sharper, drop a comment down below and maybe you'll get lucky and get a discount on a Tormac T1. Make sure if you're interested in knife sharpening, you pick out the right sharpener for the job. Until next time. Smoke on baby. <laughs>